All right, so I'm going to record this meeting. <coughs> Let's wait a couple of minutes for everybody to join. Yep, it lists me as a host this time, which is good. So, <clears throat> so I'm recording these meetings and uh, I'm going to post them on YouTube. And uh, the Yano Beach lecture, not right away because it takes a while for, for them to, for the lectures to upload. And I will also um, enable the um, subtitles, right? So if you struggle with my Russian accent, you can also read, well, I don't know if YouTube struggles with my Russian accent, but um, you can read uh, the subtitles as well. But uh, that takes a while, right? So when I upload my lectures, it takes about, I don't know, five to eight hours for the YouTube to create the um, captions. So you have to wait for those. And, um, but, you will be able to listen to lectures again. And, uh, but again, I'm gonna try to make this very interactive and you guys have to help me with that. Okay, so we have um, more than half of the class joined us. If people who are still missing, I don't know. I hope they're not struggling to get on. So let me go, let me start sharing my screen. Start sharing my screen. And you should be able to see what I see. Now this is the canvas that we're gonna be using, right? So um, this is the first time for me to use canvas. So um, 
I'm pretty green at this. Um, but uh, if you've used Canvas before, I can maybe rely on your help. Now there's this opportunity for me to see what you see, student view. So here are the announcements, you should be able to see those. Right, so the last one was just earlier today that I posted at 9, 10, when we're gonna, when we, um, with a new link to the <coughs> Zoom. Uh, for this, so this will be a grade for the file. For the files, <coughs> so here um, we have, uh, I already posted the lecture slides for lecture one and lecture two, right? So you can view those. And uh, there's also syllabus sitting there. Uh, the important thing here, we're gonna look at the syllabus in, in a few minutes, but the important thing is discussions here, right? So. Um, we're not gonna have uh, in-class discussions, but let's try to replace that with the online discussions as much as we can. So I'll be creating different topics for discussions. So I created two so far. So uh, just to get your input on what you think about online learning and um, if you have any questions about the syllabus, please post your comment in the discussion and uh, so again, this is primarily for you to exchange your ideas, exchange your learning experiences, exchange the material. But uh, I will also be checking on checking on your discussions just to make sure that nobody says something that uh, is incorrect, so that people don't learn incorrect material. Um, so please use those, right? So um, we can also, chapter one discussion is also already open. Right, somebody's already been reading stuff. Yeah, so, and the membrane system, I think I responded to this one. And uh, please start reading the, um, text and post your comments in the discussions. So for the syllabus, let's go to the syllabus. Let's go to the syllabus. All right, so uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, nine, 9 a.m. Through, through Zoom, it's my name. This is where I normally live in, three, in, off, in Camp 319, but you can't find me there right now. I will be there once in a while because I still have a research group going and, um, but uh, it's hard to catch me. So unless you want to make an appointment to see me in person, then we can do that. So here's my email, uh, office hours uh, right after this class. Uh, if you can't make it, you can always make an appointment with me through uh, and um, we can meet at a different time. Again, we'll, we'll meet through Zoom. Uh, so please do that. So as far as the textbook, right? So we're gonna use Leninger, Principles of Biochemistry. It's this, it's this guy here. Very nice textbook, thick, lots of material, but I'm not gonna make you buy it. It's like $300 if you buy it, but uh, you can use, you can buy it as a bundle on Sapling. So electronic version of this, of this book. So you can buy it together with the homework and go to saplinglearning.com. So, um, and this is some uh, introductory statement for biochemistry. Now, um, so we're gonna cover first 12 chapters of this textbook in this in this class, right? So we'll talk about, uh, well, we don't have much time, but um, I'll give you more reading to do. The foundations of biochemistry is a pretty simple chapter, just talks about some basic biology that you already know, and some basic chemistry with some valence electrons, which I hope you know how to use valence electrons and to make bonds. So it's, um, 
pretty straightforward general chemistry. Uh, Friday, Monday, we'll talk about water, right? Two lectures on water. What can we say about water? H2O, right? Um, and then we're going to switch to amino acid, peptides, proteins, and so forth. Um, protein function, enzymes, talk about sugars, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, DNA-based technologies. So here we'll learn how to, for example, how a polymerase chain reaction works to identify who committed a crime, lipids, membranes, biosignaling. And then we'll have our final on December 7th at 8 a.m. Now, so we'll have three tests, right? Three midterm tests. So those are gonna be during class time. And uh, you have to be, with the lectures, you can watch them on YouTube. With the exams, you can't take them on YouTube. So you have to be here uh, during the exam times. Now guys, at any, at any point, just unmute yourself and ask me a question if you have a question. So, uh, so here's the point of distribution, right? So um, 12 homeworks, 10 points each. Now it's presumably you have all taken organic chemistry too or the grade C or better, right? If you, if you have not, you should drop this class. Uh, well, you shouldn't be able to take it, but uh, just in case if the, you slip through the, through the cracks, please drop this class. Now for the exams, uh, no makeup exams will be given, right? So it's a very strict rule. And um, if you miss a test, then the final, the grade that you get on the final will replace it. So you're gonna have to study extra hard for the final. And uh, also, obviously, if you don't miss a test, but don't do so well on a midterm exam, I will do the same. I'll replace the grade, the poor grade, with hopefully a much better grade that you get on the final. So no homework deadline will be extended, right? So please plan accordingly. It will be not fair to everybody else who does a good job pl planning with the homeworks. And so um, I will not be extending the deadlines for the homework. Now, um, there will be some extra opportunities to, to earn some bonus points on the tests. I will have those at the end of each test, but that's about it, right? So um, please do not ask me for any special consideration because um, I cannot give it to you. Uh, it's something that is just not fair to the rest of the students in class and uh, you should plan and do well using the homeworks and exams which are given to you. Some dates, policies, academic honesty. So uh, for the academic honesty, obviously um, it may not be easy for me to uh, enforce it as, as we normally do when you take a test in class, right? So, um, my only way of enforcing academic honesty when you uh, take a test is to create questions which are not easy to um, find answers for on Google, for example. So that'll be my job. Make sure that uh, you can through the Google something and find an answer. <clears throat> so communication. So, right, so if we, if it's related to material, go through discussions on Canvas. If it's something personal, come to the office hours or make an appointment with me through Zoom. And obviously keep checking the site 
for the coronavirus, right? So that you know what's going on on campus. If you come to campus, wear a mask. You don't need to wear a mask listening to me if you are by yourself. All right. Are there any questions about the syllabus? So will these tests and exams be uh, open note or would you not want to be doing that? No, no, just going to be the regular exams. So you just have to um, um, yeah, no, you, you can't use any notes, so it's going to be a regular test. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a quick question. You said that the lectures will be posted on YouTube, or how are you going to post them after you record them? Yeah, on YouTube, right. So um, at the end of the lecture, we'll um, post it on YouTube. And as I mentioned to you, it will probably take a few hours for it to, to uh, for that to happen. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Will there be some kind of study guide for the exams? All right, so for the exams, so um, let me open the material for this chapter. So uh, when we start a new chapter, right? So the first slide or the second slide that you will see is something which is called learning goals. And this is your guide, right? So basically this outlines what I expect you to learn by studying a particular chapter. Okay. Now, some, some people refer to these as learning objectives some people refer to, to that as goals. Objectives are a little more specific, right? So goals are a little more general, but I guess we're gonna call them goals. And so, so this is a list of things which I expect you to take out from studying this chapter. And this is something I will test you on in, um, on the test, on the exam. Right, so, uh, so when you prepare for the exam, make sure you use this as your study guide, right? So when we talk about it, uh, when you study um, for the test, make sure you know how the energy is transformed in living systems. For example, let's see. For example, I would want you. To, I want you to know the uh, equilibrium equation, right? So, um, so for any process, so any process which is in equilibrium, I want you to know this equation and be able to use it. Um, I want you to know and and what endergonic is, what exergonic is, right? what these metabolites and ADH and ADPH are. So these are all energy related material. So uh, I want you to be able to draw the reaction energy diagram, right? So um, for an endergonic reaction, for exergonic reaction, so how they coupled to, to make the process go, right? So, so basically you couple delta G and delta, delta G1, delta G2. And so you can see exergonic releases much more energy than endergonic. So if you couple these two, so the overall process will be spontaneous, right? So, um, so this addresses the issue of energy transformation in living systems, right? So I would want you to know these slides. I would want you to be able to understand what's on them. And that's how you will prepare for this, for this part of the test. Okay, thanks. Will there be um, practice exams posted or anything like that? Um, maybe, maybe. Uh, usually what I do as far as practice, it's, it's going to be 
very hard for me to make a test to begin with because I um I need to because it's multiple choice and you have 50 minutes, right? So I want to make sure to uh, have enough questions for you guys so that um, um, to keep you busy, right? To make sure that you don't have time to Google things. So uh, on the other hand, uh, what I normally do with practice tests, I usually give you tests from previous years, but um, this time my tests from previous years are not gonna be the same as what I'm gonna sh give you this year, right? Um, so, so these are gonna be totally new exams for me. So okay, thank I'll, you. So I'll try to, I'll try to, um, I can show you some representative examples of questions, right? But I cannot give you the whole practice test by itself. It's just um, not practical, right? Um, would the homework be comparable at all? Meaning if we are understanding and doing the homework fairly well via Stapling, will that be any kind of good measure of how prepared we are for an exam or not so much? Yeah, so Stapling is another resource, right? So. Um, it's very important that you do sampling homework by yourself, right? Not just get together in big groups and um, and wait for somebody else to um, solve a particular problem for you. So um, treat sampling as a way to prepare for the tests, right? So homeworks by themselves are not worth much in terms of points. So um, even if you score 100% on each homework, it's, it's not gonna give you an A in this an A in this class, but treat sampling as a way to prepare for the tests, right? And so, um, so what I will also do is uh, I may, um, so the questions which I put on the test will also be related to, sub, to the sampling questions, just to give you extra motivation to, to work on sampling problems by yourself and work through them thoroughly. Anything else? Okay. Well, let's see. <clears throat> There's not, not much time left. Uh, let me just talk about something, something interesting. Now there's a lot of material and as I mentioned to you, all of this should be known to you. I mean, I'm sure you remember cis and trans, right? From organic chemistry. On the same side, cis, on the opposite sides, trans. Right? You remember how cis and trans is used in biological systems, right? How our vision works. Right, so in our retina, we have a compound 11 cis retinal, and this bond here is in a cis configuration, right? And when light, when light hits it, it undergoes switch to the trans configuration and absorbs light. And then the result of that is the optic nerve feels the geometrical change and the signal is passed and that's how we perceive vision. So uh, it's all biochemistry. Now, what, um, let me go to this particular slide, this one. It's a beautiful slide of, um, let me just put the presentation version of this. So, <clears throat> So this is a cell, okay? This is a cell with the nucleus. Now there are different kinds of um, uh, macromolecules shown here, right? So the red ones around, all around, these are intermediate filaments. The green ones are microtubules. 
and the blue are chromosomes. So, so these are this is, that's DNA, cellular DNA. And uh, so this is this cell is undergoing the process of mitosis. Right, remember from biology, mitosis is uh, cell division. So, in biology, so you, I'm sure you've you've seen pictures like this, right? And uh, but you did not in biology, you did not really look at the molecular structure of each of these macromolecules, right? So you basically treated these as objects rather than molecules or specific chemical interactions, right? Or specific chemical groups or specific hydrogen bonds or specific um, NH, OH, SH bonds. So, so the difference in this class will be that we will use these um, chemical knowledge. We will use our knowledge of chemistry, organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry to explain things that happen, to explain the biological phenomena, right? So we will try to explain this mitotic spindle using the chemical bonds which are part of these macromolecules, right? So we will learn why DNA is taken together, right? What, what holds DNA together? Anybody, anybody remembers or before we even started this material, anybody knows what holds the um, DNA molecules together? What kind of bonds, chemical bonds? Hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen. Hydrogen bonds, good job. Yes, so we will learn about complementary hydrogen bonding and we will actually be able, should be able to draw those and show how the two DNA strands, opposite strands, how they're attached to each other and how they're complementary and what makes them um, undergo replication. So undergo um, uh, basically doubling so that the two new daughter cells are formed. Now, uh, obviously, uh, this is not just information, right, for us to know. It's something that is utilized, um, utilized to, uh, for example, to make new drugs, right, to make new medicinal agents. For example, uh, so this mitotic spindle. So there is a very famous uh, cancer drug, Taxol. Let me see if I can draw it. Pen. Taxol. Like that. So, um, it's a, it's a natural product. It has a pretty, um, it's a small molecule, but it, um, it's, 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 a, it's a large small molecule. So it's, it's not the type of small molecules we are gonna be dealing that you actually de dealt with in organic chemistry too. So, so there's a famous drug which is isolated from Pacific yew tree. So you, you tree. And specifically, it's isolated from the bark. And so what this drug does it binds to these green microtubules. It binds to these green microtubules and disrupts the formation of the mitotic spindle. And so a cancer cell cannot divide, right? So the, uh, in fact, what happens with the cancer cell once it um, initiates this process of cell division, but cannot complete it because the drug binds to the microtubules 
and stops the progression of the process, the cell actually undergoes uh, program cell death. You, you may have heard the term apoptosis. Apoptosis, um, it's a very famous sort of well-studied form of cell death, apop. How does it avoid uh, non-cancerous cells? That's a good question. It doesn't. Well, there is some selectivity. So, um, so uh, any chemotherapy, any chemotherapeutic agent on the market right now has severe side effects. Right, all cancer patients suffer from um, chemotherapy-associated side effects. Right. Um, they lose their hair. They're um, they have gastrointestinal problems, they vomit in diarrhea. So, um, and that's exactly why you, you asked this question, right? So, it, uh, so Taxol, this molecule, unfortunately, it's slightly selective for cancer cells. Mm. And it's selective for cancer cells because of the nature of, because of, because these cancer cells divide more frequently, right? right. So the mitotic spindle forms in cancer cells more frequently than in normal cells. And so it hits, it hits cancer cells slightly more um, selectively just because of the frequency of cell division. But, but as far as molecular level, there is very little difference, right? So um, it will uh, disrupt the mitotic spindle in both normal cells and cancer cells. And so... So when a cancer cell, uh, basically its mitotic spindle is disrupted, it initiates a program of apoptosis where basically it kills itself, right? It's uh, one of those um, um, phenomena which is present for all biological systems. If, uh, if something goes wrong, kill, kill yourself, right? It's, it's kind of basically a suicide so that um, it's a um, it's a smooth, mild way of eliminating yourself. And uh, so, people have studied this in great detail. Um, one thing I need to tell you about Taxol is that uh, there is a um, besides side effects. It's also because it's found in the bark of the yew tree. Right, and uh, hundreds and thousands of patients have been treated with Taxol. So chemi to chemically synthesize Taxol is very challenging. So the question is where to get it from? Well, you will get it from this. You'll get it from this and guess what the population of the yew tree right now is in the United States. Is it? It's extinct. It's extinct. We killed the tree, right? So we saved uh, many cancer patients, but we killed the tree in the process. Now there's a, there are some alternative sources now. So there is some culture, uh, plant culture method, to actually uh, obtain taxol, and you can also get taxol from European, European yew tree, and specifically from the needles. Now it's here you have to strip the tree of its bark, right? You have to literally I mean, take the bark off. And so by doing that, you will kill the tree. But if you have a, a renewable source such as needles, just collect the needles and then wait for the next round of needles to, to um, give you more taxol. So, uh, um, but people have investigated specifically where taxol binds in these green areas, right? So the binding site is known. And using this binding site, people have studied, they obtained um, X-ray structure, right? Basically it's a three-dimensional way of viewing um, molecular structures of different complexes and different analogs, different compounds, which work even better than, than taxol have been created, right? 
So knowing the chemical st structure really helps us um, change the biology, it really helps us to change this mitotic spindle so it's disrupted even more so in cancer cells compared to, um, more so in cancer cells and more, efficient, more efficiently at lower concentrations, right? If you can keep the concentration lower, hopefully the side effects will be lower as well. So let's see what time it is. Yeah, we're almost out of time. Now, um, I think I've said pretty much what I wanted to today. Uh, so I will post this on YouTube. Do you guys have any questions about anything we've said today? So on Friday, we will start chapter two, which is water. And so uh, your homework is actually your sapling homework will be due. What is that doing? That's I think it's doing Friday. As of last night, it says the sapling homework is due Friday. Friday. Okay. So you have two more days. Uh, so you basically uh, finish chapter one. I'll also I'll also post an announcement that the sapling homework is due on Friday. Uh, the homework is pretty straightforward. Just know your valence electrons, know some basic biology. You should be fine. Uh, now, as far as discussions, now, I don't mind, guys, if you discuss the topics, like if you go to Canvas, I don't mind if you discuss the topics uh, from the sapling, but not the actual problems, right? So I, I, I would not like if you actually share solutions to sapling on, in the, on Canvas, okay? But you can discuss the topic, right? So if there's a topic on, um, cellular organelles like mitochondria and the plasmic reticulum chat about it right chat about it um that's fine all right do you want us to read chapter two in the book for friday too chapter two yes sir not yet no we're gonna start together so okay yeah, if you Just want to clarify, Go ahead. Um, are we finishing chapter one PowerPoint, taking notes, and then we're starting chapter two on Friday? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Anything else? All right. Well, I'll see you guys on Friday. Bye. Have a, stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.